The iPad Pro can be a fantastic video editing machine, and we talk about it a lot here on the channel. But some of you have asked, what are the best accessories? Like, what can you do? What can you buy to make this an even better experience? Let's find out. Yeah. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. We've got a lot of stuff to get through today, so let's, we gotta get going. So the iPad Pro, it's wonderful. It's, you've seen me talk about it. I'm always blown away by how well it works for video editing. And honestly, you don't really need anything. You don't need a single thing to turn this into an awesome, awesome and more powerful than most like actual computers video editing platform by itself i mean obviously it's a tablet it's designed to be used with your hands so all of this stuff is just gravy it's all gravy you don't actually need any of it so first off and this one's probably going to be contentious but i build my ipad everything about my ipad is built around the ipad magic keyboard now we're not going to spend too long talking about this i have several videos just gushing over how much i like this keyboard but this thing actually it really changes what the iPad is capable of. It doesn't necessarily turn it into a laptop. I don't want my iPad to be a laptop. I have laptops to be laptops, but this changes this into a whole other, like kind of work computer thing that doesn't exist anywhere else. It's expensive, but it gives you fantastic touch functionality without having to touch it. The keyboard typing experience is great, but what that means for video editing is you now no longer have to touch the screen. You can do all normal like keyboard shortcuts that you would normally do if you were using say a Premiere Pro, a DaVinci Resolve, a Final Cut Pro X. It lets you treat this more like a traditional video editing machine. Fantastic device, but there's other keyboards out there if you really want them. Here's a few options that you could get. Here's the Smart Folio keyboard, also from Apple, that I used up until the Magic Keyboard came out. The Smart Keyboard has the extra addition of, you can get this thing from Editor Keys. Now they sent this to me, you've seen me talk about this previously. It's just a little overlay that you can put on the uh, the keyboard if you're using LumaFusion, so you don't have to memorize all of the key presses. The iPad's not my daily driver for video editing, so it's easy to forget all of the shortcuts. So it's nice that with this keyboard, you can get little shortcuts to remind you, but it, I'm not a gigantic fan of it because it doesn't stay on like that great, but it's better than nothing. Another keyboard option you could do is the Logitech Folio one. You've seen us talk about this before too. I'm not as big of a fan of this keyboard. It adds an awful lot of bulk, but it does add protection. It has a great, great keyboard experience. And this will also give you the trackpad if you're trying to edit with a trackpad. Okay, so much stuff. So how are we gonna do this? Okay, let's start off with how we would interact with the computer itself. And first off, I always recommend a keyboard and a mouse. Now that the iPad Pro works with Bluetooth, mice, and keyboard, it's the first thing that you should buy if you want to use this for more than just content consumption, keyboard and a mouse, highly recommended. But while you could get any, like there's so many cheaper iPad keyboards you, you could get, you don't have to buy the Apple Magic Keyboard for what, like 150, 200 bucks? I don't remember how much this costs. This actually has to go back because it's part of my business lease um, for the iMac Pro that's going back in a couple of days. But you don't have to get a keyboard that's this expensive. They're like $10, $15 keyboards that work just as well without costing an arm and a leg. What I will say though, is I would continue. If you're gonna use a mouse with the iPad, especially for video editing, you gotta use the Magic Mouse. Now, normally I use an MX Master 3 as like my mouse. I use it for Final Cut, I use it for DaVinci Resolve, I use it for my computer stuff. And normally I recommend that as an accessory if you need a mouse. But for the iPad, because the gestures are different on the iPad and the iPad's not exactly set up to use like more traditional mouse functionality, you get all of the gestures of like the trackpad on the Magic Mouse. So the Magic Mouse, while maybe it's not the most popular mouse if you're using a MacBook or an iMac, I really like it. But for an iPad, I think this is probably the best mouse you're gonna get, like period. Like at any cost, I think this is the best mouse you're gonna get, especially for video editing. You can scrub everything just from the mouse itself. Super, super useful. How many times are we gonna say super today? Leave me a comment below for how many times I say super. I'm gonna try not to. Okay, next up, you're gonna to have to, because of the way the iPad works, right? There's no SD card, there's no HDMI out. You're gonna to have to figure out a way to get your footage into the iPad. And if you want an external monitor, you're gonna need something. So here are a whole bunch of options on how to get these things done. You will need some kind of a dongle. Now make sure this is not Thunderbolt 3. So you cannot use a Thunderbolt 3 dock like with your MacBook 
with the iPad. So you have to get USB-C. You don't have to get a very expensive. Here's the one from Falwetti that we've talked about in previous videos that has SD card, USB-A, and HDMI. And this was in a budget video. So it's not very expensive to get the functionality you need. But if you do want to spend a little more, maybe get a little bit more reliable stuff, you can get the Apple branded things. Like here's the Apple branded SD card reader. Here's the Apple branded HDMI, which has HDMI, USB-A, and USB-C for power, so you could power while pushing out to a couple other devices from the iPad. This is the one that I actually use if I'm gonna be making these videos for you, just because some of the problems with off-brand dongles, they work perfectly fine, but they can get hot when using it, like we'll talk about in a second, and it just makes me a little concerned. I prefer having the Apple stuff, but it's very, it's like 60 bucks to do basic functionality stuff, and then more money to get the SD card reader, uh, not the maybe not the best investment and then this one I got from I believe it was Best Buy this one's kind of cool because it does have SD card but it also has Ethernet while having pass-through power HDMI and then USB-A with this USB-A being a charging one if you want to charge it that way dongles though you will have to if you want to use this and not just use the iPad itself you will have to use a dongle unfortunately hashtag dongle life and then for workflow because you need a dongle let's talk about some external storage options because you could get up to a one terabyte solid state drive built into an ipad i don't necessarily recommend that so you could use something like this is a samsung t7 and this is just a standard la c drive so the samsung t7 is a solid state drive that small fast portable will hold your footage but you can't edit directly off of it yet. I think we'll be getting that kind of functionality, but we don't have it yet. So the workflow would be importing via SD card, rendering your files, and then backing up on the SSD. Or if you have another computer, put the files on the SSD, then transfer them to the iPad. It's wonky, yes, but for the power you get, you might actually be saving time if you spend like 30, 40 minutes waiting for a video to render on a more traditional computer. I really like the T7. I also like the T5. I can't show it to you right now because we're using it to record the footage uh, on the main camera. But the T7 is faster, smaller, and it's not that much more expensive than the T5. Highly recommend. And then if you're just looking for something for basic storage, like you're using this as your only computer and you need a place to archive your files, you can use a normal spinning drive like this LaCie. It just is a spinning drive. This is four terabytes. It costs like a hundred bucks. I have way too many of these that back up all of my uh, archival footage and I need to get a better solution for that. But this will also work with your iPad to be a storage option. Man, I feel like I'm talking a million miles a minute because we still got so much stuff to get through. Okay, you're editing. What makes editing better? Not being distracted by what's around you. So I recommend the AirPods because it is Apple. I am an Apple fan. This is my, what, fourth pair of AirPods? I just keep buying them. I don't know why. I love AirPods. But these are very great because they natively pair with the iPad. I do use the AirPod Pros. You could use the standard AirPods if you're trying to save some money. I like the noise cancellation on these. It just works so much better. It just cancels out. Like the thing that stops me from being able to video edit is when I get distracted by a whole bunch of stuff. I don't like being distracted. We need to do this. AirPods, they're great. You can use other headphones, but remember, there's no headphone jack on this iPad. So if you're using the USB-C for like HDMI stuff, you're gonna need Bluetooth headphones. These are the best. I'm sorry, everybody else. We talked about dongles a little bit. Let's talk about power options. So if you're gonna be out and about, one of the nice things about the iPad is it doesn't need nearly as much power as say a MacBook Pro 16. The MacBook Pro 16 needs a lot of power. It needs 95 watts of power. That's a lot. So you can use, with the iPad, you can use standard like external batteries. Here's a 15,000 milliamp hour battery that I use from RAV Power. Here's also just like a little fast charger from Anker that I also use. And then that's all the power stuff. Oh, cables. You'll need cables to charge stuff with the power stuff. And then I've started using these on the MacBook, but I wanted to add these here. If you just have like a quick accessory or a quick thing that you want to add, or even if you do have a USB-A keyboard or mouse that you want to use with your iPad, or you want to charge via USB-A, here's just some little like USB-C to USB-A adapter dongles. Because one of the things that I'm starting to like is... Dongles are great and they give you a lot of functionality, but I don't always want to break that thing out because sometimes just having a dongle hang off of my iPad, that is not exactly what I want for every situation when I just need a USB-A or something like that. So you can get these little things. Look at that. Look at how much easier that is. More simple, clean, minimalist. We gotta be minimal, it's 2020. It's all about the minimalism. Maybe we can title that. Now that we're using this, we can title the video something minimalism. That's how you win at YouTube. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. But yes, power, very important. 
Almost, I promise guys, we're almost done. If you're gonna like physically interact with the keyboard and you're more on the design side, you can get the Apple Pencil. I never use this. I use this when I'm trying to demonstrate stuff on YouTube videos like this, but since getting the Magic Keyboard where I don't actually have to touch the screen if I'm doing work, this only gets brought out for these videos. But it is, I mean, it's a neat piece of technology. I like how accurate it is when I do wanna draw or write stuff, but if you're a designer, get one of these. If you're not, probably skip it. And this one's gonna sound weird because it's an iPhone and you're gonna be like, why are you trying to tell me an iPhone's a good accessory for an iPad? Well, because the ecosystem works so well, if you are doing video editing and something that saves me all the time is I just need a quick shot. Oh crap, we're doing this video. I need, I'm trying to explain something to you all, but I don't have the clip. You can easily break out the iPhone, do whatever, film whatever you're gonna film in 4K with great stabilization, lots of options. This is the SE2, which I'm a huge fan of. You can then airdrop it onto your iPad and then you're good to go. It's little things like that that make this like an extension of the iPad. And that's why I consider this to be a fantastic accessory, even though it's a fantastic main thing on its own. That's like gearception. Gear inception when a main gear can be an accessory for another main gear. Okay, we're gonna need some coffee after this. So you're video editing, right? You wanna do some voiceover on that video work. How do you do it well? Well, you could use the iPhone to record, then airdrop it over, or you could use some other accessories that we're gonna talk about. And this is, this is overkill. You don't necessarily need it, but if you want the best quality you can get, period, we'll talk about this. So I'm a big fan of Zoom recorders. They don't sponsor the channel. I just buy all this stuff because they're fantastic. This is the Zoom F6 which is what I would consider to be like an actual professional level video recorder. This records in what's called 32-bit float. If you're not an audio person, it's basically unbreakable audio files. Like you could record super quiet, bring it all the way back up and save it. You could record way too loud, bring it all the way down and save it. This thing basically is magic when it comes to audio. And you can plug this into the iPad and record everything through this straight into the iPad for your voiceover work for your video production. It's awesome. And for that, you could use a whole bunch of microphones. I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that I've used before. Here's the Deity D3 Pro. You could use any of these microphones, plug it into the Zoom, then have it record right into the iPad via the USB-C. Crazy, crazy stuff. But if you don't want to spend the money on the F6 because it is expensive, you could use something like the H1, the H4, or even the H6. The H line are much cheaper. This one's going to be a little more fiddly to work with because it does do line out, but again, there's no headphone jack, so you'd have to use like a TRRS adapter to work it around. It will be a little more fiddly, or you could record to the micro SD card and then use one of these dongles to import it that way. And that would, if you're going to try to save some money using a Zoom H1, which is a fantastic, fantastic recorder and can do it roughly the same way that you could on here, unless you needed phantom power or XLR ports. But this is way cheaper, way easier to use, and you get little dials. And you can just use it as a sweet microphone by itself. And you should get some bags or some way to keep all this stuff together. I mean, look at all this junk. Look at all this junk. You gotta have some way to organize it. There's lots of bags. I'll overlay a bag that I really like on here just to make sure that you can keep it all together. So the last thing is gonna be an external monitor that you could use with these dongles. We kind of talked about it before. I don't have one here because it's really big and heavy and I didn't want to drag it from the office over here. Imagine that there's a monitor in my hand. Just get a monitor. It'll make it a lot easier to use this when you don't have to stare at the tiny screen, whether it's a 12.9 or an 11 inch, unless you're traveling and you can't have an external monitor. So these are all the accessories. Dang, so much stuff. Like I'm gonna have to put all of it. I just made a huge mess on my desk that I'm gonna have to clean up. But what are some of your favorite accessories for the iPad Pro for video editing? Leave me a comment down below. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website online store or portfolio. It's easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style and bring your ideas to life. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash everyday dad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.